Hello, let's do the New York Times Medium Sudoku for May 1st, 2024. There's a link in the description that using the same software that I do called Sudoku Pad for free. Uh, if you want to follow along yourself and use the same software as me, or try it yourself first. Um, I take a very systematic teaching style approach to uh, my medium solves. Uh, and I don't assume you know how many of the techniques work. I assume you know the basic rules of Sudoku, but even then, I do explain that sometimes. So um, this is a great way to get started in your Sudoku solving journey, if you'd like to do that, beyond the very, very easy puzzles. Okay, so with all that said, um, I'm going to get started right now. All right, so the first thing we're going to do, uh, let's talk about some terminology first. This is a cell. There are 81 cells, because we have a 9 by 9 grid. So all of these are cells. This is a row. There are nine rows. We count them from top to bottom, one to nine. These are columns. We count those left to right, one to nine. And then these are boxes. These three by three areas that can't repeat digits, we call those boxes. And uh, there are nine of those as well. And we count those one, two, three, four, uh, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So left to right, top to bottom. Finally, we have bands. A band is a row of three boxes. There are three of those, band one, band two, band three. And then there are three stacks. It's a column of three boxes. There are three of those, uh, stack one, stack two, stack three. So those are the terms you need. Um, hopefully fairly straightforward and understandable. Um, now, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go through all three bands in order so we don't miss anything. And there's uh, uh, three particular things you're going to look for. And I'll go over those as we look for them. The first thing to look for before moving on to the next band is uh, when we have exactly two of the same digit appearing in the band. Um, so not once, not three times. So you want to find buddies, basically. So uh, you're going to end up comparing each box to each other box. If you think about it, that means you need three comparisons. Box one and two need to be compared, box one and three, and box two and three. But the order can save you some time. So I would start with the box like this one here with the fewest number of givens in it. And you can just eyeball that. It's not important to be perfect there. Um, but when I start with this, I just need to compare it against these two. So really, I'm just looking for a two or a nine in one of these two boxes. And I just look for two or nine. And I see, okay, I have a nine, but no twos. And so now we do that nine. So think about this nine and this nine. These nines are buddies within the band. So one way, you, one thing you can think about here, um, there's a lot of ways to think about this, but I think a, an effective way to think about this is we're expecting to get three of every digit in each band because there's three rows and there's three boxes. And both of those say that there's the, the digits one to nine in each row. There's the digits one to nine in each box, exactly once each. And so there's gonna be three nines in this band. So we're missing one of the nines. We need to place that somewhere. Now we're not gonna exactly be able to place this nine, but we can narrow down where it might be placed. We never guess. We're always gonna do logical, um, logical steps that are 100% logical, 100% correct. We are convinced that what we're doing is correct. And in that way, we will be able to solve the puzzle without ever guessing. Um, and in a nice, fun way that takes us on a journey. So what can we say about this, though? Well, we remember I said that there's a single nine in each row and there's a single nine in each box. So we can kind of intersect that logic. The, the nine, this nine's in row one and this nine's in row three. So row two is the row that needs a nine. So let me actually highlight that in green. Also, box one has a nine and box three has a nine. So box two still needs a nine. Now, the nine must go, because we can't repeat the nine in the row and we can't repeat the nine in the box, the nine must go in one of these cells that's colored both purple and green. And the reason for that, is, as I just said, we can't put the nines in uh, where it's not overlapping because we only have one more nine to place and it needs to satisfy both this row and this box. So the conclusion is that nine is in one of these three cells here. Let's just mark those green. So one of these green cells is going to be nine. Now, another way to think about that, and this is a more classic way to think about it, is we can't repeat nine in this row, right? So where do, first of all, we need a nine in this box. We're gonna think about the box. We need a nine in it. And this nine is telling us that it's not in these three cells because we can't repeat the nine in the row. And this nine is telling us that it's not in these three cells because we can't repeat it in this row. And so if the box needs a nine, it's gonna be in one of these three cells, the three that are remaining. So it's the same conclusion, right? That's what's nice about logic. You're always gonna get the same conclusion, even if you approach it from a different angle. 
All right, well, obviously this one is not a nine and we can't put a nine in the same cell as a one. So nine is actually restricted to these two cells. So we can't place it. We're not going to guess. It would be a 50-50 chance to break the puzzle in our very first placement. That's, that's no good. We, we, don't, we only want 100% chances uh, to succeed. So uh, we want to mark in some way to remember that nine was in one of these two so that later when it gets further restricted, uh, we will immediately, we won't have to rescan those nines. A lot of mark, a lot of the reasons to mark is to avoid having to refine what you already found. It's a memory tool. So memory tools are obviously arbitrary, but here's my suggestion. Uh, Sudoku pad has a corner marking mode. So just to be clear, there's a corner marking mode and there's a center marking mode. Center marking puts the markings in the center and they all kind of line up. Let's do, let's do seven, eight, nine here. Um, so in the center marking mode, they all line up in the center corner marking mode. They end up in the corners. So I would recommend using corner marks. We're going to corner mark nine into these two cells. And what the corner marks will always mean, 100% of the time, we'll always use corner marks to mean that we are looking at the box. And within that box, we have restricted that digit to just the cells that are corner marked. So nine is restricted to these two cells only because nine isn't in any of these other cells corner marked. Um, now, I would recommend only corner marking if there are it, you can corner mark every time you've reduced it to two places in a box, two cells in a box. Um, if it's down to three cells in a box, only if they're all in a line, all in the same row or all in the same column. So in this case, if this one weren't there, we could still corner mark these nines in a row. All right, don't make weird shapes with your corner marks. It's going to make it harder to scan for the things we need to scan. Okay, so that was the nine. So we finished looking at this box, but we still need to compare these two boxes to each other. So again, I just picked the one with the fewest givens, and I think about one, five, eight. And I just, I only have to look at this box because we already compared these two. And so one, five, eight, I only have the one here. So the one has a buddy. Those look into this box like this. We do look down here to see if we have any ones helping out. This one would have helped, but there's already a nine in that cell. So either way, this cell's not a nine. So we can quarter mark the, the one up here as well. And that's the only repeat. Now, before you move on, I want you to glance for something. I want you to look for any row that's been completely filled with digits. We don't have any, so we don't need to trigger that. And then the next thing I want you to look for is any row or box which has re been reduced to four or fewer open cells. This box, for example, has five open cells, so that's not quite there. And then there's, you know, this row is down to six. Oh, there aren't any is the conclusion. So now we're just going to move on. So now we're going to repeat that with the next band. So I'm going to start with this five, eight. I see there's no five eights over here. Then I'm going to go do two, three, six, seven. Look, we'll compare that to this. We have the six and the seven. So we do one at a time. So we have these two sixes. They look into this box. It's always the box they aren't in, right? And then there's no sixes up down, up here or down here. So we can just corner mark sixes all the way across. We also have these two sevens looking in. This eight's not a seven. So we can corner mark seven into these two cells. No sevens here, no sevens here. All right. And so that's it for the repeats. We're going to look for filled rows. I don't see any. We're going to look for rows or boxes down to four or fewer. I don't see any. This row is down to five. Okay, so next band. Um, we're looking for a repeat for the two or eight. Obviously, this box is empty, so we can ignore it, right? But there is a, there is a buddy for the eight. So these eights look into here, and this eight looks down. We can corner mark eights here. Now, before moving on, we look for rows uh, within a box that are filled. This is a filled row. So unfortunately, we don't find anything with this right now. But what you want to do is you want to look at the two rows that it, that isn't the filled one and also isn't in that box. So it's kind of like the opposite. <laughs> the, 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 you're going to be looking at these 12 cells um, that are kind of diagonal, right? They're just not in the same row and not in the same box. And you want to look for any digit that isn't already in the box. Unfortunately, eight would be the only candidate there and eight is already in the box. Um, so we didn't find anything. Uh, and so I guess we just move on. Um, I, I'll, I'll only explain what to do when when we get there uh, usually we do find something like that um, and then so the next thing to look for is rows or boxes down to four or fewer and we don't see any so we have finished all three bands we haven't done much we just got these ones nine seven sixes and eights marked we didn't get any digits that's a bit unusual but it can happen um, so now we're going to do the stacks maybe the stacks will be more useful we do the exact same thing so this eight and this two i look for two and eight up here i see the eight so we have these two eights looking up i look over here to see if any eights help this eight pretends to. <laughs> uh, and then we have an eight one of these two. I say it pretends to because this one was already telling us eight wasn't there. Um, so two and eight. And then now we look for five in here. We don't see it. We already looked at the eight. Um, so now we just look for filled columns, filled columns or columns or boxes down to four or fewer. And I do not see any. So we move on to this box. This box is empty again. 
So we just look for 158 down here. And I don't see anything. Okay. So now we look for filled columns or columns or boxes down to four or fewer. Don't see any. All right. Last stack. Um, and then we move on to the next phase. Don't worry. There's more to do if this stack doesn't help us. So we have the two and the nine. No twos or nines down here. Okay. So I'm going to compare four, five, seven, eight up here. Uh, we have the fours. So these fours look up. And now this four looks in. We have our first hidden single. We have discovered that there is only one cell in this box, box three, that can be four. So it must be four because the box needs a four and this is the only place it can go. The only cell it can go into in box three is this one, so it will. And that's called a hidden single. It's hidden because anything that's going to be related to finding it when looking at the entire box, an entire row or an entire column, which generically we will call a house. A house is just any set of nine digits that can't repeat. Um, so if within a house, we, we had to look at the whole house to discover uh, whatever tech, whatever we discovered, that's called a hidden technique. And if we're looking at individual cells and what they can be, those are called naked techniques. All right, so we place this four. What do we do? Do we move on and say, well, we also have the sevens? Not yet. We need to follow up on the four as soon as we place it. And then we just try to remember what we were doing but when we backtrack. So the follow-up is we already scanned this band, but now we have updated information. So we need to relook at, uh, at least related to this four, we need to relook at what we already scanned. So for example, there is a buddy for the four now. So those look in here and that corner marks a four up here. We also want it, it affected the box in the row. So we just want to check if the row or the box has been reduced to four or fewer open cells and it has not. So that was the follow-up, but we did get more corner marks out of it. Um, and so now we go back and we say, well, we also have the duplicate sevens. Those look up into here. These aren't sevens. We have another hidden single. It's a hidden single seven. And we want to follow up on that. Did we get, do we have anybody sevens? We do not. Did this fill up a row to be four or fewer? It, it did not. It's five. And then the box is also five. So that's it for that band still. Um, so we got the um, four, five, seven, eight. We compared that. Now we compare these against each other. The four, seven, uh, we already finished. The one, six. Not helpful. Okay. Now, before we move on from this stack, what was the next thing to look for? Filled columns. We have one here. So we look at these two columns and we don't care about empty cells and we don't care about digits that are already placed in the box. So four and seven are already placed, but this five and this six are useful. So let's start with the five because I'm just going to start with the lower digit here. So we can see that the five can't actually go in these three cells. Now think about what would cause that if these cells weren't already filled. Well, what would cause that is if I had a buddy five somewhere here. We're, we're going to ignore any other evidence of where it might be, right? We're just going to say, well, the five could have been somewhere here. So I call that a virtual buddy, right? You can think about how that there would have been a five here, removing five from these three. And we're going to prove that there must actually be a five there. But what we're going to do here is we're going to say, well, if there was a buddy five here that did the same thing as removing five from these, right? then that means we're going to end up with a five in one of these three. And this five says not here. So we end up with a five in one of these two cells, which we can corner mark. And that is true, right? The five is not here. The five is not here. You can just see that. But by thinking about the virtual buddy, that reminds you that actually there is a virtual buddy here. And I'm going to explain that by explaining the concept of pointing. So what is pointing? Well, what does this corner mark mean? Remember, the corner marks are telling us about the box. They always tell us about the box. And so what these two five corner marks are telling us is that if it, within this box, in the final solution, there's going to be a five in this cell or there's going to be a five in this cell. Obviously not both, but definitely one of them. Neither is not an option because we must have a five in the box and these are our two options. So whichever cell ends up being the five, what's, sh what's a shared property between these two cells? Well, they are both in the same column. So there's always going to end up being a five in column seven here, up here. Right? One of these will be five and that will be the five for the column. So the rest of the column cannot be five and that's called pointing because you can kind of think about drawing a line between these two fives. And then if you sort of make that an arrow, they're going to point at the rest of the column saying the rest of the column is not five. So importantly, these aren't five. We already knew these weren't because there's a five in the box. And then this five looks into here. So we actually end up with a five in these three cells, which is where I said the virtual five was. Now, if we look left, we see this five says not here and this one says not here. So there's only one place for five in this box. Now you might say, well, why not here? Well, I just proved it couldn't be here because we have fives up here. And so we can't put a five here also. So this is the only place in the box for five. So we can place it hidden single five. 
Now we'll definitely follow up on that five there. We have these two fives looking into here. This five looks down, that places this five. We're gonna follow up on the stack here. These two fives look down, this five looks in. We can corner mark fives down here. And uh, also for this stack, this got filled up. So we're, with follow-ups, you're gonna end up doing a bunch of stuff and then you're gonna keep backtracking and doing stuff and eventually you'll get back to where you were. But we don't wanna miss anything. So this is filled, that was something we were looking for. So we have we have this one here, right? The one still helps though. It's gonna have a, a virtual buddy here. Oh, sorry, it's gonna have a virtual buddy here, which takes, sorry. This is filled. It's going to have a virtual buddy over here, which we're pretending took one out of those, and then the ones here, right? So really, the, the ultimate thing is in this box, one is in one of these two, and that points down along with this one, putting a one in over one of these three. Sorry, I, got, I made a mistake there, but if you always go back to the roots of how the logic works, we can see we had these pointing ones, this one looked down, there's ones here, and those line up with the, the three here that we had. Cool. All right, so that is the follow-up for that stack, as far as I can tell. There's no columns. Oh, this box has been reduced to four or fewer. So let's think about it. So this is the first time we've had this. When it's four, we want to think about the four digits. We don't necessarily want to mark them yet. And I haven't even taught you how to mark them yet. So what we're going to be doing is using center marks, but let me go through this. So uh, first thing to do is think about what those four digits are. They're the four digits these five aren't, right? So it's one, four, eight, nine. What you want to do is you want to think about how restricted 1, 4, 8, and 9 are. So for example, this cell can't be 1 or 8, right? We're just looking around the box. We're looking at the boxes that sit around it. And we're looking for those digits we just said, 1, 4, 8, 9. And I'm seeing we've got this 4, we've got this 1, 8, we've got this 1, we've got this 8. Now this 8's not helpful, unfortunately. But a lot of these are helpful. So let's start with this 1, 8 here, right? So I said that all four of these, so including this cell, is down to one, four, eight, nine, but this cell can't actually be one, eight. So it's down to only four or nine. Now, what are we talking about? We're not talking about the whole box as a whole. We're talking about an individual cell. And we know that the final digit in that cell is going to be a four or it's going to be a nine. If I looked at the final solution and I looked at that cell, I guarantee you it's a four or a nine. I don't know which, but it's one of those two only. It can't be any of the other ones because we can't break Sudoku rules. So the consequence is we want to remember that this cell is going to end up a four or a nine. So for cell centric stuff, we're going to use center markings. And the center mark is saying, I don't know whether this is four or nine, but it's going to be one of them and only one of them. It's a comprehensive list of all the candidates for that cell. Notice we don't need to mark fours and nines in the whole box or the row or anything. Just in this one cell, we're center marking four or nine. So um, additionally, something I noticed is that um, Basically, all of these cells are seeing at least one thing, right? This four sees these two cells, and this one sees this. So this cell sees one and four. So if you want, we could just say uh, we needed one, four, eight, nine. This is down to only eight, nine. And then this cell sees the four, right? So this is from one, eight, nine. Now, I would only recommend center marking a cell if it's down to three or fewer candidates, which is why we're looking at the restricted, in this case, the restricted box in the first place, because the chances of in an individual cell being down to less than to three or fewer candidates is very high when there's only four total candidates it can be. Now this is also one, four, eight, nine, but this can be any of them, so we're not going to mark it. But this is one thing I want you to be on the lookout for is we saw this four looking in here and it removed four from two of the cells here. That means there's only two cells left in the box that can be four. And remember, we can corner mark when that happens. In this box, four is down to only these two cells. Now, these two corner marks here, they point. They're going to point up and down saying these cells can't be four. So that, that's an important thing to remember. Um, now, unfortunately, there's not much to mark here because we don't know where the other fours go. Um, we do have the fours limited up here already, and then we have these fours here. So that means the, the fours are going to be in these four cells, and I do not recommend corner marking in four cells no matter the situation. So we're just going to have to try to remember that we have these pointing fours here. All right. So is there anything else to follow up on in, uh, we were following on the stack or maybe the band. Um, I think that does it. I think, I think we finished following up on everything. Um, I apologize if I missed something, but we're going to backtrack here. We, we did all of that because we found this five. And so now we're, uh, we still have, um, we still have, we remember we were looking at this filled column here. I know it's been a while, but we also have this six looking into it, right? So six is in one of these two cells. That's going to point down along with this six, putting six in one of these two. 
All right, so that finishes the filled columns. There's no other filled columns. Last thing to look for, columns or boxes down to four or fewer. We're going to start with the fewest. So this column is down to three. So since it's down to three, it's safe to just mark it up. It's going to be three or fewer. Uh, so we're just going to center mark it as we go. So we have the one. We need two, three, and six. And we see that this six tells us six isn't here. We also had a quarter mark down here, which means it couldn't be here. So um, yeah, there's not much to do with this yet, but it does reinforce that six is down here. Um, this whole box is down to two, three, eight, nine. And this one sees an eight, so and a three and an eight. So this is down to, oh, and oh, it sees two, three, and eight. So we have our first naked single. If I were to center mark this, two, three, eight, nine, right? It can't be two, it can't be three, and it can't be eight. So I have a single center mark left, and that's called a naked single. Remember, naked techniques are related to an individual cell or, or, or what individual cells have been reduced to in terms of candidates. And this cell has been reduced to only nine. So it's called a naked single. This might be the most, um, this might be the first technique you might have learned. Um, it's almost the last technique you're learning in this solve. But the idea is this cell needs to have a value in it. And the only value available is the nine. It's not allowed to be two, three, sorry. It's not allowed to be one, two, got ahead of myself. Let's start over. It's not allowed to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, or this seven, uh, eight. Right. Good thing I didn't continue with nine because it can't be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. The only digit left that it can be, and it must be a digit, is nine. So we can place the nine in there. Now that nine, we follow up on it. Right. The first thing I see is that even if this wasn't red, I see that this was down to four nine. Well, now it can't be nine. So it's a naked single four. I could remove the nine first and see that, but I really don't need to. That places the that places the four here. Now that cleans up this four corner mark. It can't be four anymore. Um, and so now we just want to think about the consequences. We place this nine and this four. Does the nine have a buddy? It does not. Does the four have a buddy? It does. So those fours look in, this four looks down. We have a four in one of these two. Now, did we, did we fill up a row? We filled up both of these rows. So, um, we, we look, we look here, right? We look for the two, five, six, seven. The two is the only interesting one, but two is very interesting because it looks into here. This is filled as non two and these aren't two. So two has only one place to go in this box. It goes right here. And do remember that to follow up on that over here, and we get a two in one of these two. Now, I am seeing this down here. Let's just clean this up as a three, six pair. Um, and we'll, we'll come back to this box too. Sometimes you end up with too many things to follow up on, and you got to prioritize, and then try to remember in your head what to, to go back to. You can't do multiple things at once. I'm sorry if you're looking at something different than me. But this is something I want to trigger in your head. And this is a little bit trivial because the whole row is filled. So we know that these are down to two, seven only, but something to trigger in your head is when you corner mark two digits into the exact same two cells, what you have found is what's called a hidden pair. It's a little bit silly to be talking about it here, but this is the first time it's come up. So we know that in this box, the two ends up in one of these two cells and the seven ends up in one of these two cells and only these two cells. Well, we need two cells for the two and the seven. So that means nothing else can go in these cells. We already know nothing else can go in them. <laughs> but even if we didn't, now we do, because one of these will end up two and one of these will end up seven by, the, by our corner marks. So we can actually convert those corner marks to center marks and say, well, this is going to be two or seven and this is going to be two or seven and they're going to be different because they're in the same row. So that makes a two seven pair. All right. We also have a pair down here. This box is down to two. The pair is a three and an eight. So that's down to three, eight. Now this is what's called a naked pair because we can see in the cells, this is down to three, eight, and this is down to three, eight. Well, they can't both be three and they can't both be eight. They share a box and a row. Both of them say you can't repeat digits. And so one of them will end up three and one of them will end up eight. It's kind of similar to how we were thinking about pointing, but it's kind of like two digits pointing, right? This pair is going to say the rest of the row is not allowed to be three or eight. It also affects the box, but I mean, the box is filled already. So these can't be three, eight. So actually, we can look for buddies for the threes and the eights, right? So the eight has a buddy here, right? The three eight look in. So the eights in one of these two, actually. And that's going to point in. Oh, actually, we already have the eights, right? But then threes also have a buddy. And this three looks down, so we can place three in this box here. Okay. Um, we follow up on that stack just real quick, because I see that's really all you're, we're going to be doing. Um, and then now, uh, this row is down to three digits, one, eight, nine. This one can't be the eight. So it's down to one, nine only. 
Um, this row is down to four digits. We know this one is one nine only as well, because it can't be eight because of the three eight pair. And so the, really for the box also, it's just down to one nine. Um, but also the, the eight is removed because we have these corner marks here, but also because of the three eight pair. All right, and so this is down to one four six nine. We see this can't be nine, so we can do one four six. This cell can't be this cell can't be one because of this. So this is down to four six nine, and this can't be four, so it's down to one six nine. So we could mark it up if we want to. They're all down to three. You you might decide not to because of clutter, but I'm also seeing that this band is basically done, so I just like to have it marked up for that reason. But I'm going to get rid of these corner marks because I don't think they're as useful anymore. Okay. So that, that was the follow-up for this band. It was a very good follow-up on that one. Um, we placed this three, we placed the four. Let's make sure we followed up on everything. Um, I think we did. And then here we, just, we did these sixes. Okay, I got this three six pair I wanted to follow up on. This is a three six pair. If you remember this naked pair, it's gonna remove three six from the rest of the box because the three and the six are here. So you can kind of think of them as basically finished. We just don't know what order they go in. So the, what are the remaining three digits for this box? Well, uh, they are the 1, the 2, and the 9. And we can see that this 2, 9 get eliminated, so we actually have a naked single 1 here. So that's a 1. That removes these 1s. That makes this 2, 9 pair. This 1 also removes this corner mark 1. Now there's only one place left in this box for 1. So we found a hidden single 1 just through the use of our corner marks. Follow up horizontally. Um, not, seeing, not seeing anything with the 1s. The 1s are already done. Uh, didn't fill up a row. It didn't reduce a row to four. It did reduce this box to four. Might as well look at it. We can do it for the stack as well. Uh, but we know that we first let's do this column because this column's down to three because we know where the two nine are in this column. They're not here. So this is down to three, five, eight. We can mark that up. This one's not eight because of that eight there. And then this is also this column's down to three. It's three, six, eight. And this top one's not three and this bottom one's not eight. Okay. So we actually know eight is in one of these two. We could mark that if we want. Okay, so this stack is also kind of done. It's not really done, but like, look, it's it's done to like pairs and stuff. Okay, so there's not much more to look at for that stack. So, was there anything that I got that I didn't follow up on properly? Is always the next question I'm going to be asking. Um. So, for example, I'm looking at the blue cells, right? I'm just going to look at every band. We got the one, seven, and four. Uh, we got these fours marked. The seven doesn't have a buddy. Do we have any rows or boxes down to four or fewer? We do not. So we're going to look at this band. This band's taken care of. We look at this band. We, have, we got this one. It uh, doesn't seem to do it much. Uh, we have these pairs, but they're vertical. They don't affect the band. And then there's rows and boxes, but they're not reduced properly. Okay. Now we look at the, stack, uh, the stacks. We got this three. We got that marked. We got this four. We were trying to mark up the four, but it's just down to here, so it's not helpful. We got this five. We marked that. Um, this is a filled column. We took care of the one already. Um, and that's the only thing that works there. Uh, and then any columns or boxes down to four or fewer, there are not, and this stack's taken care of. Okay, so our first pass is done. We did, we did everything we needed to do for the bands and the stacks for those three things I said to look for. Now, the puzzle's not done yet, obviously, so we need to do something else. Well, the next thing I want you to do is go box by box, and there's specific things I want you to look for in each box. But the, the first thing I want you to do, and we're going to do this in, in, in one, and we're going to do this in multiple passes, but the first thing to look for in a box is when you have two givens that share a row or column, or really just every pair of givens can be helpful, but the most helpful ones are when they share a row or columns, like this three, four, for example. What you're going to be looking for is anything in the row that they aren't in, since they share a column, there's a row they aren't in, that whatever that single row is, you're going to look for pointing or digits or anything that aren't already in the box. In this case, it's the eight. Then you're going to look at the two columns they aren't in, and you're going to try to find buddies for anything you found in the row. Well, we have a buddy eight here. So the consequence of this is that this eight looks in and this eight looks in. Now, unfortunately, we really didn't have to look at eights because we already had it corner marked in the box. But I wanted to demonstrate that at this point, even, even without this eight down here, we would have found that eight was limited to two places in the box. Right, so we're looking for that, but in a useful way, because we already had eight's corner. So we're looking for digits that aren't already known in the box. So this one nine, it would only be the eight. So we're going to move on. Uh, we, you could look at this four one here. When you do that, there's only going to be one row and one column. Uh, so actually, we did find something. We found the five, right? So these two fives look in. 
And that does allow us to corner mark fives into one of these two. And that can be helpful, because if you do another one, that'll make a hidden pair. Or it'll help you later in the solve to have found um, a hidden single when one of these fives gets eliminated in some way. So unfortunately, the two and the eight aren't helpful. So the four and one, you can also look at the four and the nine. You would look for the three here and the one five nine there, nothing. And then we can look at the um, the one and the three. Uh, we'd be looking for any, it, we already know that this column two, five, eight, it's it, the two would be the only useful thing. So you might as well just at this point, look at the two and you see it's from this one, three. And so the two can be corner marked over here. Now, this should trigger something. This is a little bit more difficult to see, but we have reduced, we have these corner marks. It's three different digits in three cells. Now you might be saying ranks, this one's can't be two. This one can't be five. This one can't be eight. I don't care. In total, we have three cells, and in total, we have three different digits corner marked in only those cells. Even if it's fewer, that's fine. It's still only those cells. So what does that mean? Well, that means in this box, two, five, and eight, they need three cells, and these are the only three cells they can be in. Let me say that again. The two, five, and eight must go in this box. And if we take two, five, and eight together as a whole, they must occupy these three cells. And they must also occupy three cells in total. So they're limited to these three cells, and they must occupy three cells. So what we found here is a hidden triple. And we can still convert our corner marks to center marks. This is 2-8, this is 5-8, this is 2-5. And we can get rid of the corner marks if we want. In this case, I won't because it is, eh, yeah, I will. I'll, I'll, I'll notice this. It's up to you if you want to clear it or not. I'd like not to have a little bit less clutter if I can. And so the consequence of this is whatever we thought these cells could be, they're now only down to these values that we converted the corner marks to center marks. So that means there's only two, two values left that we haven't found in this box. Uh, we have the one, two, three, four, five. We need six and seven. And this seven tells us the seven's not here. So this seven looking in, right? This also can't be seven and this can't be seven because they have to be two, five, eight. If we try to make, if we try to put a seven here, right? If I try to put a seven here, I could put the two here and the five here, but where now, now where's the eight go? Or I could, okay, well, I'll place an 8 then. Okay, well, now this is a 2. Now where's the 5 go? Right? It's not going to work. I need three total cells for that. So this 7 looking in, these aren't 7. There's only one place for 7 in this box, which is right here. Isn't that cool? And now these 7s follow up on them. The 7 looks up. We get the 7 here. Follow up on these 7s. The 7 looks in. Put the 7 one of these two. Okay. Um, and now this cell is going to just be whatever the last digit is we haven't accounted for. Um, it's the 6. So that's a 6. So this cell can't be six now. Okay. Um, now there's a bunch that just happened to this stack because we just placed this six and seven. We want to follow up horizontally as well. Um, I'm not seeing anything. Actually, I am seeing something, and we might as well be looking for this right now, which is we also had a six down here. So I just wanted to see how this box was affected by sixes because we didn't have it cornered in there anymore. So I just paid attention to the six looking in here and this six looking up. And these aren't six. And so I actually found a crossing on this five, seven, basically a little bit ahead of time. But there is a six in one of the, oh, I don't know. There's a six in one of these two cells here. I can also clean. I, I thought I cleaned up the six. I think I hit undo by accident. Um, so there's a six in one of these two cells, which points down saying these aren't six. The six looks down. Remember pointing is because the box got the six reduced to the single column. So the rest of the column can't be a six. So that puts a six down here somewhere. Oops, I meant to corner mark it. Okay. So that was the follow-up on that six there. But vertically, this is now filled, but we already know about this box, so we're not too concerned about it. <coughs> so what we're going to do is we're going to look at how this column got reduced to only one, three, four. And we're going to fill one, three, four here. This one's not a one. Um, anything else to do with this six, seven? There are no buddies for them. Okay, I think that's really all the follow-up we're going to get on that, but it was quite, was quite nice. All right, and so that's why we focus on the boxes individually at that point. Um, it is something you could have seen in your first pass, um, but in this case, we, we saw it in, in the second pass, and that's fine. Um, sometimes the first pass finishes the puzzle, and you don't have to look for the more complicated things. All right, and I also did reduce this row. By placing the 7, I reduced this row down to 4 digits. It is 2, 4, 6, 8. We have all the odd digits. We just need the evens. And I see that this can't be 2, 6, or 8. So this is a naked single 4. That removes this 4 corner mark. Now follow up on that four. These two fours look down. This four looks in. Puts a four in one of these two. Did you see it? What did I do when I placed these two fours? Let's ignore this eight. Maybe that helps. We have, the, we have reduced this, these two cells to a hidden pair. Four, five, hidden pair. I'm going to add this eight back in. 
We convert just the four five to center marks. We remove just the four five corner marks. And then we go, well, every other digit we thought could be in here was removed. So that means this actually can't be eight. Again, if I try to put an eight here, I can't fit both four and five in this box. It's just not going to work. I can only fit one of them, and that breaks the puzzle. So this is not an eight. Well, now there's only one place for eight in the box, which is this corner marked eight here. So we can place it. Okay, any follow-ups here? Well, uh, yes, this, this eight is removed, so that places the eight here. This also makes a one nine pair. That, that naked one nine pair removes one and nine from the rest of the column. So this can't be nine. That places the nine in this box. And now my recommendation is just think about the, like the columns are super reduced. The boxes are super reduced. Um, so let's do this box first, just because I'm looking at it. So we need the two, three, and six here. I'm just going to pencil mark that. We see this three is not here. So the three has to go here. That removes the three from this cell. And we're, I think we're getting into the part of the puzzle where it's impossible to fully follow up on everything. So just pick the low-hanging fruit. We have a 2-6 pair here and a 4-5 pair here. There's only one digit completely unaccounted for in this column, which has to go in this cell. Uh, and it is the 9. So we're just going to place the 9 there for that cell. There are two digits unaccounted for in this column. We have this 1-9 pair. So these can't be 1-9. So they are down to um, 2 and 6, it looks like. And this 2 tells us this is 6 and this is 2. Um, cause the two had to go somewhere in the column. It had to go there. That makes this a naked nine and two. Um, this is a triple. It's a uh, one, three, and seven. You can clean that up a little bit and I don't need the corner marks anymore. So this stack got, got really, really benefited from all that, that we just got. Now we're going to try to follow up. I see that this band may be useful to follow up on. These are down to one, three, seven in the row. And we see that this sees one and three. So we have a naked seven here that gives us the two and the seven. Uh, do the two and the seven do anything? Yeah, this eight, five, and two got resolved. It resolves this two, six. This is now an eight, six, three, and five. That resolves this three and eight. We're at the part of the puzzle where everything's just resolving. I removed a seven. There's only one place for seven now. It's there. This is down to one or three. Can't be three because I'm just looking at the row. The row is down to one, three. This can't be three. So that's one, that's three, that's one. Uh, that gives us uh, the nine, the six, the four, and the one. It gives us the one and the nine. We're down to a 3-4 pair here, don't need the corner marks. This column is done except for a single digit. Always want to focus on that, right? That's the 5. We get the 4 and the 5, gets us the 3 and the 4, the 6 and the 3. We need a 9 and a 6, and we're done. So you can see how it just, once you get enough info, the puzzle just collapses just by looking at restricted rows, columns, and boxes. Especially if you're looking at the most restricted ones. So. The key step to this puzzle really felt like this 258 hidden triple. Or, um, yeah, that, that really felt important. Um, you could have also seen that this was a naked 6 7 pair. So, really, I think we actually ended up just having a um, naked uh, 6 and naked 7 in this box that were a little bit hard to spot. Um, but we found that through this hidden triple, and that's perfectly fine. Our corner marks led us along that journey. Um, and that was pretty neat to be able to find a hidden triple in the box. So cool. Um, well, uh, that's the puzzle for today. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, then why not leave a like, subscribe, and a kind comment below.